Hi, FB family. It is Ilan Bomani, and I'm here with you sharing some information in regards to what you can do as a parent taking care of some uh, vegan raw fitness kits, okay? Um, I raised both of my boys completely on a vegan slash raw vegan diet all of their lives. None of my children have been to the doctor, to a nurse, to a hospital, to the emergency room. They know nothing about HMOs, none of the health insurance claims or policies. And me as a parent, I haven't had to suffer the trials and tribulations of so many of you having to take off from work when they get colds or flus or anything of that nature or any type of major diseases, okay? My youngest one, he does have the symptoms of lupus, etc. but we have that completely in check, and I'm going to show you some strategies of why, you know, what's the benefit of being on a vegan diet, um, because if you fully understand it, one of the key things that we try to do is what? Save time, money, energy, and stress <laughs> when we're dealing with colds, flus, viruses, look at the amount of money that goes out. Imagine going to the emergency room. You know, one of the key causes of bankruptcy, particularly within the African-American community, is because of having to go to the emergency room because of some type of ailment. So it doesn't pay to be on a sickly type of diet, okay? So you want to be very conscientious about that. So what I'm going to do is kind of answer some questions. I got some questions in Vegan Raw Fitness. I always ask people, you know, what's the number one question that you have that will help you um, basically transition to a vegan type of diet, okay? So, and I'm going to share this information because one of my little ones, body's out of balance, okay? He has what you would call a cold. For me, it's a dis-ease. The body's out of balance. And what we do when that happens is we immediately uh, take ash action. And I always believe it's called the nutrition is in the kitchen. You know, they always say, let your medicine be your food. Let your food be your medicine. Hint, 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 folks. Okay, hint. It's in your diet. Okay, so if the body's out of balance, usually it's too much of mucordial buildup, mucus buildup inside of the system. And what the body's naturally doing, it's healing itself. So if you're experiencing cough, the body is trying to expel the mucordial buildup in the system. If you're sneezing, if you are having a runny nose, if you're having an ear infection, if you're um, you know, having um, diarrhea-ish effect, your body is trying to throw off naturally the poison. What we are supposed to do is assist the body. Okay, no, the body cures itself. The doctors don't cure the body. The naturopathic doctors, like myself, we don't cure the body. We assist the body to allow it to heal itself. So in saying that, simultaneously, I'm going to answer a question that someone had in our group, um, a vegan raw fitness. You're welcome to join now so you get the inside scoop. And one of the questions were about spices in your food. Pat asked the question about putting spices in your food. You call them spices, I call them herbs. And so that is primarily what I use when my children's body is out of balance. So I'm gonna give an example of a soup that I'm making for my son today so you can see the nutritional value of the soup that, you know, food is supposed to heal you. Keep that in mind. It's supposed to design to heal you. Twinkies don't heal you, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Pop-Tarts don't heal you. Cheerios, cereal, don't heal you. Captain Crunch used to be my favorite back in the day before I became a vegan. It doesn't heal you. So we want to we want to eat the foods that are going to heal the body. So in saying that, so let me tell you about this wonderful healing soup that I'm going to make. You've already heard so many people talk chicken noodle soup. Chicken soups heal the body. So people tend to make that as one of the keys. Well, I'm going to make a vegan kind of natural flavor as far as that's concerned. Come on in. You can come on in. My son's trying to figure out if he's coming in the car in the midst of my show. <laughs> so anyway, back to the issue at hand. So what we're doing right now is 
we're going to share with you the recipe that I use. And Pat, here are some of the spices. Everybody should be incorporating these type of spices in a lot of your dishes because they really help heal the body on a consistent daily basis, okay? So one of the key things, I'm going to make this wonderful quote-unquote chicken uh, noodle soup uh, kind of vegan style so you get a chance to appreciate it. So here's the deal. What we're going to do, hey, hey, how you doing, Heidi? So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to share with you this dish that we're going to be doing. So instead of making quote-unquote chicken noodle soup the way you know, we're going to make the soup as far as healing. So the number one thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in distilled water into the base of the soup. Okay, just use a typical little saucepan. So we add that in there. Now, the second ingredient, what we're going to make, the noodles, we're going to make, we're going to try not to put any mucus-forming foods in the body. So when we say mucus-forming foods, we're talking about meat. We're talking about dairy. We're talking about, you know, pastas and things of that nature. We're talking about milk. We're talking about eggs, all those type of things that um, will cause the mucuria buildup to build up. Your body's trying to throw these things off, so we've got to assist the body to do that. So what I do is I get Chinese thin rice noodles, very thin, very minimum amount of mucus in there in order to have that quote-unquote noodle base. So you want to get the Chinese rice noodles, a thin string that you can put in there, okay? They're called threads, okay? So we get that, and they're really clear, okay? So you get those type of noodles in there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a quote-unquote unchicken broth cube in there. So it has basically the spices that basically you use to basically make chicken noodle soup, okay? Like the uh, um, poultry seasonings and the like. So it's going to be added into that. So I'm going to put a cube of that in there. And then I'd use, uh, let's say, two quarts of water, okay, to kind of, so every cube, one cube for two quarts of water, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add seaweed into it. And I usually use wakame. Wakame seaweed. That's W-A-K-A-M-E. Wakame seaweed. Now, if you understand seaweed, just like in the bottom of the ocean, this is the beautiful thing about it. Same thing it does to the body. The same pH balance as the body. It's alkaline. Whenever the body's out of balance with cold or flus and things of that nature, germs, infections, it is because the body becomes acidic. That's when it has a lot of mucosity built up in the system. So good, you love seaweed. You're gonna really love this one. So what it does, it's just like in the ocean, it draws up all, the seaweed is at the bottom of the ocean, and it draws up all the toxins and dirts and debris that are inside of the system of the ocean. You wonder where it goes, it absorbs it as a sponge and it throws it off the system. The same thing that it is going to do inside of your body. It's gonna collect all those viruses, all those germs, all those funguses. It's going to draw it up. It's going to collect and it acts as a great fiber in your colon. And it's going to broom the colon and it's going to flush out the toxins and impurities outside of your system. Now, what is really fantastic because it is alkalizing the body, what it's also going to do is going to put all those good minerals, trace minerals, essential fatty acids like phosphorus is going to put magnesium it's going to put calcium there we go there's your calcium it's going to put calcium it's going to put uh i think i mentioned potassium it's going to put um do, 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 do. did i mention all the ones that i needed to mention as far as that is concerned yes and it's going to add an enormous amount of protein ah we also got our b vitamins in there we've got our a we've got our d vitamin because of the photosynthesis from the sun so you get all, you're going to get vitamins, you're going to get trace minerals, you're going to get essential fatty acids, you're going to get, um, in addition to that, you're going to get the amino acids from the protein. People always focus on protein, 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 which is going to help build the system and enliven it and get it to wake up, okay, because you got those electrolytes in there also. So you're going to put, that's the main thing about the seaweed. If you think about it, in Hiroshima, when they had the, the, the nuclear weaponry, the, the bombing of Hiroshima, Believe it or not, the people of the country that were attacked from that radiation, they basically, it, it even absorbs the radiation. So it is also getting rid of um, metals, okay, toxic metals that are inside of the system. Enormous amount of iron inside of that also, okay. So if you can fully understand that this is how therapeutic it is, and even, even better than that, it has, the seaweed has the same molecular structure of your blood. Now, I'm, I'm going to get too technical, but this is really important. The middle molecule of the, the seaweed is magnesium. 
in your blood, it is iron. So it acts as like a blood transfusion because it's going to purify and cleanse your blood. And that's where all diseases truly are manifested because the blood is the life force of the body. So that's what we're doing. We're going in there and we are cleaning out the system. Okay, can't get any better than that. Okay, so we're taking out the bad and by bringing in the good. Okay, so we're going to add the seaweed in there. Then after we add the seaweed in there, we're going to put um, some garlic, which is what? An immunity builder. We're going to also put the cleanse and purifies and gets rid of mucus in the system. We're going to put onions in there. Same property, same type of principles, but at a lesser degree. We're going to also put ginger. Ginger acts as a catalyst. It's a heating food, okay? That's why I'm not a clear component of, you know, being completely raw. I think you got to sometimes add some fire to the system in order to purify and cleanse the system too. That's why you get a fever. The fever is just designed to heat up the body so that it can destroy the bacteria and funguses and, and toxins that are inside the system and kill them out of the body. That's why, that's why fevers are very, very good. We tend to suffocate them by stopping them. You don't want to stop a fever. You want to maintain it and control it, but you don't want to stop it, okay? So anyway, let's get back to the issue at hand. So then you got that natural water inside there. That water always is a major cleanser detoxify the cleanse the mind the body and spirit like a baptism you gotta have water so we use distilled water in the two course that i just now mentioned okay so i mentioned to you the seaweed i mentioned to you also the um onions the garlic and the ginger oh this is sounding good and then you add i add some brag in there which is which is natural aminos acid that you can get from soy okay so now to add a little quote-unquote meat uh, texture to it, we add and we chop up some cubes of uh, tofu. And we add that in there to, once again, bring the body some, some protein, uh, et cetera, into the system. So, so that's the whole entire soup. Now, me, I, I tend to be, to bring once again some fire, I'm going to add a little bit of cayenne pepper in there too, okay? So that gives you a complete dish and meal that you can make that has an absorbed amount of natural herb spices in it that's going to help purify, cleanse the body system, and also is going to help with building the body so that it can heal itself. Immediately what we need to do is get rid of the toxins and also build the immune system so that it can combat and fight the disease that's in existence, okay? So that gives you an idea of the benefits of having spices in all of your dishes now you can have some sweet spices pungent spices you can have some bitter spices etc in all of your dishes in order to be healthy now i hope that answers a lot of questions on how we're able to raise some healthy children and how you can be prosperous too okay say the name of the seaweed again okay heidi the name of the seaweed is wakame w-a-k-a-m-e and what i am going to do is i'm going to put the recipe inside of this um, uh, uh, post here so that you can see exactly step by step. And you can get wakame at your local Asian food market or supermarket, or sometimes you can get it in the international section of a typical supermarket like Kroger's and Publix um, and the like. So, you know, in the international section, you can find these items that I just now made mention to. So I hope I answered everybody's questions. Anybody got any questions in regards to, um, you know, um, vegan, you know, raw, you know, dietary regime for your kids or for yourself while we're on this call? I'd be happy to answer. But I answered one question today. Tomorrow, about the same time, I'm going to answer another question that someone had as far as vegan raw fitness. Some people want to transition into a raw vegan diet and how to do that. Another person asked the question about organic foods. Should they or shouldn't they? And what type of organic to do? So I'm going to show you how to do a combination of both because it's very expensive to do organic I tell you, I have to be rich. I tell people, the only reason why I want to be rich, ladies and gentlemen, is just so I can eat right. It's sad, but the good stuff costs money. So I'm going to teach you how to do it economically. Another question that someone that I will be answering in the next coming days is they want to know about the pre-meals and post-meals as far as working out is concerned. They want to know, do they do it? Do they need it? Guess what? This is my secret is I don't use no meals. I don't, I don't put those little package things together. I tell you why you don't have to do that. You don't have to eat six or seven meals a day in order to lose weight and all that. Ah, 
none of that and also for protein and good carbs and i got i'm gonna tell you how to easily do this whole workout thing and i got a lot of muscles and how to do it listen an elephant look at all those muscles that an elephant has and let's talk about the gorilla and they're all vegetarian and vegans and all they use is fruit and vegetables for their dietary regime so in a nutshell that's a hint that you don't need to eat meat or a lot of food on your system in order to gain a lot of big muscles. Totally a oxymoron to say the very least and a complete myth as far as that's concerned. So I'm going to dispel all that information too. And should you do supplements, you know, as far as, you know, supplement your diet on a vegan raw food type of fitness program or just in general for yourself. So feel free to add that. What can I use as a thickener? That's what you don't want to use. See, thickeners, like I said, here we go with the dairy in there. You just want it to be thin. You want it to be totally liquidy. No thickeners, no thickeners, no thickeners. Okay, all thickeners, like I said, build up mucus in the system. And when, when mucus is in the system, uh, I'm Heidi and everybody else, you got to understand what it does is it locks in and it absorbs all the funguses, the viruses, the bacterias inside of it and it locks it in and that's what causes it to stay in your system. You know how thick mucus can get and you get you see the kids with the runny nose is ooey gooey. <laughs> well that's what that's from. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to alleviate that. So from the catalyst from the ginger, the catalyst activity of the cayenne pepper and that heat, natural heat, is gonna draw it, it's gonna liquefy all that mucus so that it flushes out of our system. So that's what you really want to focus on. Okay, no thickness. No thickeners, I mean. Okay, cool question, Heidi. Thanks so much for asking that. Any more questions? I'm going to scroll down and see if anybody got any more questions before I end the conversation for today. I want to wish everybody a lot of health and wealth. And I do want to encourage parents to really think about, you know, you know, if anything, transitioning. If anything, having more fruits and vegetables in your kids' diets and things of that nature. I know it's a lot of my children. When I used to have my uh, naturopathic practice, my... um. A lot of kids would come to me. A lot of children were constipated. They were not eliminating enough. Listen, your children should be eliminating three times a day. If you're feeding them, feeding them breakfast, lunch, and dinner, they should be going one, two, and three. And then some of you are giving them snacks. If they're having one a day, they're constipated. If they're having one every two days or three days, they're constipated, ladies and gentlemen. And when they're constipated, they're keeping all that stuff inside the system, and you're guaranteed to have weight gain. And in addition to that, you're guaranteed to have diseases and colds and flus and things of that nature. My kids don't get, aren't, don't have allergies. They don't get colds. They don't get flus. Very rarely that they do. And usually it's because when they're around other kids, that's the only time that it happens and their immune system gets it broken down. And so we got to spice it up. But I'll be honest with you. Only one of my kids has some health challenges. And the reason why is because he likes to eat vegan junk food. So still has all the, it's junk food. <laughs> so it's still not the healthiest food in the world. So I pre-warned him, you're going to eat this. You're breaking down the system. But everybody's got to go their own path and have their own experience. Okay, somebody asked about allergies. Do, 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 do. I am allergic to ginger. What else can you use okay cool if you're allergic to ginger okay and let me say this to you technically you're not allergic to ginger what you need to do is any allergy is a manifestation of the liver being overburdened and toxic okay so you got to balance your liver and you're going to have to clean that out for yourself angelia okay that's going to be very important all allergies have a problem with the liver and the liver is the master detoxifying organ of the body so that's what you're going to really want to do okay um but for the mean in the meantime what you want to do is instead of ginger you know you could use mustard and you can use the cayenne pepper and the like in there to kind of get that a uh, spicy catalytic type of flavor oh 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 even better turmeric that's another thing i'm going to add in turmeric t-u-m-e-r-i-c man they just they just now discovered it but if you understand native american if you understand african if you understand um uh uh jamaicans and also my mexican family friends and also my um east indian family and friends and my uh, italian family and friends they tend to gravitate towards these basic um, type of, of, of herbs and spices into their foods already on a consistent basis in a lot of the dishes. 
So you really want to incorporate it in most of your dishes. So you can definitely uh, do that, okay? Um, so so I hope I answered the aller allergies. Allergies, like I said, the main thing is because the liver, it creates an enzyme called histamase. You take an antihistamine, right? So what you need to do is basically focus on detoxifying and cleaning out your liver so that it can work up to optimum conditions so that enzyme can work to to make, basically um, you know, expel any of the allergic reactions. Why do I know this? I used to get allergies just like everybody else during the fall season. Also get dairy out of your system. I promise you, allergic reaction to that. Certain foods, once again, cause the mucoidal buildup, break down the system, and cause these so-called allergies or gluten issues to occur. That's an imbalance in the body. It's not you. It's the body that's out of balance, okay? Cool. Uh, I love turmeric. I put in everything. Yes, please do. Now everybody's discovering. You know, if you notice that all the fruits, all the vegetables, all the herbs have nutritional benefits. If you know, notice people don't, you know, eat these type of foods and have, you know, health issues or health challenges. Now, like anything in life, all things in balance. If you OD on turmeric, if you OD on, on garlic, if you OD on other things, everything will have an adverse reaction. It's like if you OD on water, what are you going to do? You're going to drown. <laughs> if you don't drink enough water, what are you going to do? You become dehydrated. So keep that in perspective. All things in balance. The yin and the yang. Left and right. Male, female all things and balance in order to for things to be able to work in harmony okay so any last questions i think i've been on here longer than i had intended to be but i just wanted to open up your eyes to certain things because a lot of parents i see them they they care i'm so blessed that my home-based business my fba business affords me the opportunity that when my kids are out of balance I can take off any time that I want to, and I can play Dr. Bomani, and I can nurse my kids back to, back to health without worrying about, you know, leaving my job and my boss firing me, or, or and that actually happened to a woman. She had to assist her son who had to go to the hospital because he had emergency, you know, operation from a sickness, and she lost her job. I mean, it's, it's pitiful what ha what's happening out there, but nevertheless, if you keep your kids healthy, you don't have to worry about these, you know, so-called emergencies popping up because you're keeping them on a very good balanced diet. So that's why I'm out here sharing this information with you because, you know, I live a great, I don't worry about colds, flus, or sickness and all those haphazards that so many parents have to deal with because of the type of lifestyle that I lead as well as how I take care of my kids. And keep in mind, none of my children have been vaccinated. So we vaccinate kids to get rid of these diseases, but you know, what I'm very clear about, you know, would have another topic on that one and at another time. I breastfed my babies. I did all the immunity building strategies in order for them to have a healthy life. And I've got two healthy 16-year-olds and 11-year-olds. Yeah, their body get out of balance. They have the typical, like, colds and flus and things of that nature. But we just go to, into the nutrition kitchen and we take care of business. And before you know it, they're back in tip-top shape and back out there testing my nerves <laughs> every single step of the way. So, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. Love sharing it with you tomorrow. Come back. We're going to answer some more uh, raw vegan uh, uh, questions at about this time between 12 and 12.30 p.m. on your weekday. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now. I hope I answered everybody's question. Let's see. No more questions. You're welcome. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.